Uh, I had a hobby too. Mine happened to be guns and ballistics. And I studied guns and ballistics as much as I could and I wrote an article it was about high velocity. So out of all my years working at Weatherby, the last five have been some of the most exciting. Working with Adam, with him running the company. And to think that I get the opportunity of carrying on my grandfather's legacy 75 years later here in Sheridan, Wyoming. I mean, it really is a dream come true. On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. Welcome back to On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. We've got a couple, couple, well, one new guest and a couple guests today. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm your host, Luke. Hi, Tyler. I'm your co-host. Yeah, you can be the co-host. I can be the co-host. I think that's cool. Uh, Tyler, yeah, I'm here. Hi, Luke. Hi, Tyler. <laughs> Raleigh. <laughs> Raleigh Waylon. How you doing, buddy? Good, man. What do you do here? Good to be here. I'm director of sales. Never been on the podcast. You usually don't let the the sales guys on the podcast. This is an experiment, just just for the record. Yeah. We'll see how you do. There's probably a reason. I I feel <laughs> like our marketing sales bond has grown. Yeah. So, yeah, I think so, so I feel like yeah. it was time. It was time to have you guys on. Yeah. Glad to be here. Seth, you've been on before. I have. Yeah. June. Yeah. Generally, when we're talking about the... Uh, the bigger cartridges, the the three seventy eight family stuff is kind of where you bring me in. Get get right into that the uh, flat part of that mic for me. Yeah, no the no. the front flat. There we go. Yeah, is that now, a little better? That's a lot better. Oh, oh way better. We're doing it. I feel like we have Seth on when we need to talk about killing stuff. Yeah, or yeah. big cartridges. Mm-hmm. So those are like the two. It's true. Yeah, specialty, the fun stuff, or vanguards too. <laughs> oh. I mean, Today we are talking about vanguards. Yeah, good segue. It's launch day. Boom. A couple new vanguards actually. Mm-hmm. Hey, co-host Tyler, do you want to you want to like spill the beans on this one? I I I, I kind of flubbed up the beginning of the uh, new Sorex. I started went off on a random tangent. You went on a tangent. Um, no, yeah. Today we have two new vanguards. Pretty excited about both of these. There are a couple of different options here. So we have the Vanguard Spike Camp which is featuring a heavy barrel vanguard and shorter barrel lengths, which is something we haven't really done a whole lot of. So very excited about that one. And then we have the Vanguard Obsidian. This is our best value Vanguard we've ever offered. Ever. Ever. 100%. Ever. Full featured. So Seth, uh, Vanguard Spike Camp, maybe just give us a rundown of the features. Why do we call it Spike Camp? What is the stock on it? So, yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, the Vanguard Spike Camp featuring the Boyd's Laminate Spike Camp stock. So, uh, henceforth the name. Uh, again, as Tyler had said, the uh, heavy barreled Vanguard. So, you've got a number three contour on that guy. It is straight fluted. It is threaded 5 8 24. So, it is fully compatible with most of your um, suppressors or a variety of aftermarket uh, brakes if you so choose. It is short action, so you've got 6.5 Creedmoor, 308, 223, uh, 350 Legend in this guy. So a little tip for the uh, straight wall states out there for sure. Uh, Cerakoted on that guy, uh, tungsten Cerakote, so you're weather resistant. Uh, Pretty nice gun. Yeah, I mean, you're upset. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's hot. (laughs) That's hot. That's a good one. Yeah, 16 calibers. 16 calibers. Mm -hmm. All but one are threaded. I'm sorry, only one's not threaded, at least right now. 350 350 Legends not threaded. On the Obsidian, right? Yeah, you you jumped. jumped. Oh, my goodness. You you, you kind of leapfrogged. I did. I'm sorry. Okay. Spike yeah, camp. Spike camp. Four calibers. Heavy barrel. All of them are threaded. Four calibers. I, Absolutely. Yeah. Can yeah. we cut stuff out? Totally could, but we could. it's too late. That <laughs> ship sailed. That's, Way uh, too late. Yeah. You are all over the board right now. <laughs> yeah. In marketing, we First have the, time. We have jokes in marketing that we can fix it in post. We're not going to fix that in post. <laughs> Great. Sales would never sell anything that we don't make or can't make. So I would, will sell that one in 16 <laughs> calibers. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll make it in four calibers, but Raleigh will sell 16. Absolutely. Yeah, please don't. Yeah. The, uh, Again, very cool gun though. It is. Uh, it's got a nice look to it. It's also got a thumbhole stock, so that's something that we haven't done for quite some time. And it's an ambidextrous 
thumb hole stock. So for the lefties out there, it will be comfortable for you to hold left-handed as well. So this addresses a number of things that we get asked about: thumb hole stocks, shorter barrels, heavier barrels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. that's three things. Yeah. And left-handed, <laughs> some some sort of left-handed compatibility. I mean, yeah. that always seems to come up. So, yeah, I think we uh, we nailed quite a few on this one. It, uh, it looks good. It feels good. It's a very compact rifle. So, again. Can, What's the Cerakote color? That's tungsten. The tungsten with the black bolt looks really nice. It does. In that stock. Looks really good. I'm kind of excited for, like, the Midwest guy who, like, with these shorter barrels, if you're hunting out of, like, a box blind or you're mm-hmm. doing, like, a deer drive in some of those straight wall states – this is going to be a fun little gun to carry. We did some good content on this out at the ranch, and I'm like, I could just feel like I'm, like, stalking through, and it's like, this thing needs to kill a whitetail. Yeah, coyote hunting out of uh, out of uh, side-by-side or whatever else, that could be a pretty nice one with that two two three also. So a lot of fun stuff can happen with this one. A lot of adventures to be had. It almost has that truck gun feel to it, you know, just being shorter and more compact. It looks really nice. It kind of is a truck gun. Mm-hmm. I could see that riding and, you know, riding shotgun and ranch truck. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Or any truck. doesn't have to be a ranch truck. <laughs> could be a really nice truck. It I don't could know. be. Yeah, sometimes the ranch trucks are the nicest trucks. <laughs> Sounds That's like right. my place. <laughs> okay. What's the other one? Raleigh was excited about this one, so. You want, do you want to <laughs> you want to take a shot at I'm the obsidian? I'm excited about both of them. Real quick on the spike camp, though, the... He's not ready. He's going to be The Cerakote color looks great with that stock. It's if only somebody had already said that. It's <laughs> almost like tungsten and brown just somehow yeah. goes together. They go great. Oddly. Yeah. They go great. Yeah. Uh, so the Vanguard Obsidian, this one's real nice as well. It comes threaded. That's something that we've had a lot of questions about on our uh, Vanguard Synthetic that we've run for years, uh, decades probably. Um but this one, just having that threaded option in half 28 threads, standard threads, so most suppressors will work with it. It's a great entry-level uh, Weatherby that a guy can start shooting Weatherby calibers in if he wants to and just get used to uh, how awesome the Weatherby calibers are compared to others. If we're a little biased in this room, I think, but if a guy wants to just try out a 300 Weatherby, let's say. Uh, he can thread it, buy it in a sub $600 gun. It's just a great little way to do it. So uh, it comes already threaded with a matching uh, end cap. You can also buy an aftermarket break if you don't plan to shoot a suppressor, but you uh, want to take a little bit of that recoil off. You can uh, buy an aftermarket break from us or one of our dealers. Uh, the new Vanguards come with a hollowed out bolt knob, which is a nice little feature. Take a little bit of weight off the gun. And the stocks, a lot of, you know, everybody sees black guns everywhere they go, but uh, they're honestly, a lot of them tend to be pretty boring and they're just, you know, uh, another black gun, let's say. But our synthetic stocks are really pretty beefy and just have a really good fill to them with the griptonite rubber grips on them. They just feel a little bit more substantial than a lot of the other black gun brands that are out there. So I, I like it. It's nothing fancy. You can beat this, it up and use it. This thing's got to be one of the best values on the shelf. Now. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah, for yeah, absolutely. I mean, What's the street get... price going to end up probably fall, settling in around? Probably right at that $500 range. Mm-hmm. I mean, four ninety nine or right in there cold hammer forged barrel i mean one piece bolt three position safety great two-stage trigger i mean it's it's just a fantastic gun all the way around great tool for sure yeah i'm i'm pumped for this one yeah this is gonna be a good one and it's something with a lot of the you know the aftermarket support on vanguard if you get it now and want to buy a mm-hmm. stock later it's a it's a great gun to start with yeah so you could buy a peak 44 stock to fit this gun if you've Really wanted to make it fancy. And it comes in 16 calibers. So, (laughs) Would you say it's bad to the bone, Rob? It is. A little George (laughs) Thoreau good. (laughs) It's fun. Yeah. Okay, so are all 16 
cartridges threaded? I'll let our product manager answer that question. <laughs> All but one. <laughs> The All. 350 Legend is not yeah. threaded in this one because of the barrel contours. So. Just don't quite have enough meat on their bone. Not quite enough meat on the bad of the yeah. bone gun, but close. But all the other 15 are, and there are going to be some shorter options on this one. I was about to say that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, there, I beat you to the punch. So, yeah, we're uh, taking a couple of inches off of several of the calibers that are offered. So, uh, again, for people that may be putting a suppressor on this gun, it's going to be a little more suppressor-ready in that uh aspect of it i guess yeah historically uh people that have been following vanguards for a long time for at least the last what six years since seth and i've been here um most of the magnums are running 26 inch barrels mm-hmm. you're kind of middle magnums <clears throat> excuse me middle magnums are running 24s and then that's kind of it yep. yep um so we're we're going a little shorter so basically the only thing staying at a 26 is the 65300 just cuz we need every inch of barrel to burn all that powder to get the mm-hmm. velocity, right? Yep. And then uh your 300 Weatherby, your 257, 300 Win, right? Uh are going to 24, 7 Rim Mag, 7 Rim Mag as well. Yep. Uh and then there's a couple that are staying at 24 and then there's some 24s currently that are moving down to 22 like right. uh, Creedmoor 308 Seven out eight. Mm-hmm. So twenty-five out six. Yeah. Yep. There's a there's a handful in there. I think that's exciting. It's Absolutely. kind of where things are trending. Yeah. So you you kind of you know you oversee product development, right? And yep. you get to see you do a lot of like the market research to the idea to how do we facilitate this? Does the numbers work? That's been a trend that you've been seeing pretty heavily within the consumer market and stuff. Yeah, definitely in the consumer world in the last two, three years, uh, that's just been a very loud uh, bunch out there saying barrels need to get shorter. And a lot of it is driven by the the desire to run suppressors on on rifles. Mm-hmm. So doing everything we can here to, to keep velocities high, but still have that middle ground where you can you know, put a suppressor on it and not have a full antenna hanging out behind you when you're hiking around through some timber or whatever else. So, uh, yeah, I think we're, we're trending in the right direction there. Yeah. I, I think you're going to see a continued, we like to leave little, uh, nuggets of information <laughs> on some of the podcasts, uh, reward the people that listen and pay attention. So that I think you'll see a continued trend of barrels getting shorter. Some cool stuff. Yeah. Just a tip. There, mm. there could be some stuff out there. <laughs> uh, Raleigh, you're Luke. the director of sales. Yeah. I'd like to ask you some questions about what you do. Okay. Let's I, do it. I do your, uh, you know, performance reviews. That's not what this is. So I <laughs> technically know what you do. <laughs> well, you're but, the host. So. But for those, yeah, I'm playing host here. So, for, But for those that don't know what the director of sales at Weatherby does, just give us a little little bit about what a day in the life of Raleigh looks like. And actually, before you do that, I need to give a quick disclaimer. My mom <laughs> watches this podcast, yes. and I think your parents may have probably watched this one. There's been some confusion over the years. Yes, even there inside has. inside the office. Absolutely. Just because I think we both have a similar colored beard. Yeah, we do. We often wear hats. I can't grow my hair as long as you, though, fortunately, <laughs> <laughs> for everyone. Uh it would get really confusing, but uh, yeah, I don't know if they can patch in. I don't know what the marketing term is for putting a picture into video, but our Halloween. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that'd be a good one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Raleigh came as me for Halloween. Yeah, yeah for, for Halloween, uh, more th- you know, there was about half the office dressed as either myself or Luke, and me and Luke played right into it to where we showed up on Halloween dressed normal, and yeah. everyone was dressed no, as it's, us. No, it's, it's a step further. This is a total detour, but I think it's funny. <laughs> so my daughter dislocated her kneecap, which was like, that's a whole other story. I'm not going to get into that. But I went to the hospital or the doctor with her, and I call Raleigh or text him, because we have a Tuesday morning, like, all-hands meeting. And uh, yeah. I'm like, hey, Raleigh, can you just run the meeting today? <laughs> Not knowing that he's planning to impersonate me that day. So uh, from what I understand, you ran that meeting I as did. me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That same meeting, I happened to be the last one to it. And I <laughs> didn't. I'm like, why is no one here? Everyone's late today. And then I go into the, the meeting room, and it's just everyone. 
yep. looking like me. Adam and Brenda walked by and did a double take. They thought, yeah, Luke was leading the meeting. It was pretty yeah, great. It's pretty good. So, yeah. So, what do you do here? Uh, <laughs> Other than make a <laughs> lot of much jokes just and pranks, <laughs> dress up like Luke all day. Uh, no, so Weatherby Sales. Obviously, we have uh, a variety of ways that and methods that we sell Weatherby guns, uh, either through our dealer channel out there. We have a lot of uh, dealers out in every state, or at least forty-nine states. Uh, we don't have one in Hawaii, but uh, outside of that, we have a really good dealer network uh, that stock all of our guns. They work directly with us and our uh, our sales reps that are out across the country as well. Um, and they'll place orders with us at shows or either over the phone or through email. And really just facilitating that whole process. Uh, so we have the dealers, we have mass merchants like your Sportsman's Warehouse, Shields, Best Pro, just to name a few of those guys uh, have really close relationships with all those guys. And and then the distribution level. So there's distributors for the outdoor industry that are essentially holding houses or um, they'll take our inventory and sell it off to dealers all across the country, even if they're not a direct dealer of ours. So you may walk into a dealership out there and we don't know them necessarily, but they have a really good relationship with their distributor. And that allows them to just carry less inventory and order a gun when you need it. And the beauty of that is that you can walk into the lot walk into a lot of these shops and try a gun out before you buy it. So um, all in all, we have 30 individual or independent, um, meaning uh, reps out there across the country. And uh, they're a third party rep group. Third they're party. Not, they're yeah. not Weatherby employees. Correct. Yeah. They rep other brands as well. So that helps the dealers out. They don't have hundreds of sales reps coming in every day trying to sell them something. They can work with these guys that uh, rep our brand and others. So, uh, yeah, we have a pretty lean team here. We have uh, four guys on the sales team, and it's a pretty fun lean crew. Come up with different ideas, different promos on how to sell things and really just work with our customers at every level and try to give them the best service and help them with whether it be sales. A lot, a big part of that is tying in the marketing, either through marketing programs for each individual dealer, or distributor, mass merchant, or uh, just working with them on their current inventory and trying to make sure that they have the best products on their shelves for the customers, just to keep everything current and flowing. So, and we have a lot of new products. These are just two of several that we've come out with this year, like the Sorix, and there's Sorix Shotgun that you probably saw on a recent episode of the podcast, and we also have uh, the Live Wild, several 307s and Mark 5s. It just keeps keeps growing, you know? The line and keeps we're getting not cooler. Done. We're not done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah we, Seth keeps coming up with awesome new stuff, and it's just hard to keep up with on the sales side, but it's fun. It keeps it all fresh. Yeah. So you don't want anything new? <laughs> 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 I feel like here at Weatherby, it's just we're scheduling podcasts in advance on some stuff, and we definitely <laughs> about every month have something new coming here for the first half of the year. So yeah, it's uh, definitely fun. And for you guys, there is another. <laughs> <laughs> for you guys, uh, you guys, yeah, work directly with our dealers and stuff. So like, mm-hmm. if you're a consumer, that's when we do encourage you. Like, hey, if you can't find a particular Weatherby, go into your dealer, and they can order it. So right. that's what we always express is if you can't can't find it at your local big box store and they say they can't mm-hmm. w- order it or something, just go to your local dealer and they should be able to get you that 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 rifle ordered. So we always say like support our local dealers and our big box stores. So yep, yeah. absolutely. What did you do before you got to Weatherby? <laughs> I worked for a local company. I'm a Wyoming guy. I've lived in Wyoming all my life, and dream job moved to me. Essentially, I was in natural gas emissions testing (laughs) 
And uh, it was pretty much a it was a great company, but uh, wasn't really passionate about it. I was passionate about the outdoors and hunting and fishing and just grew up my whole life hunting and fishing. So uh, I heard the announcement pretty <coughs> early on that Weatherby was coming on and jumped on board and you're never in, looked back. You're it's in been, what they call the gun awesome. selling business now. Right? Yeah. Is that your slogan? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Oh, that's Randy's. <laughs> but shout uh, yeah, shout out to Randy. Um, but no, it's it's been great. It's been a very steep learning curve. Everything's a lot different than any other market that I've worked in before. It's it's fun. It's cool products, and it's mm-hmm. a great team here. So it's just been a real blessing to have the chance to get in and you know bring what what I could what I could bring into the business uh, that, you know, a lot of industry guys may or may not see, especially on the Wyoming side. You know, it's just been it's just been fun as a Western hunter and maybe bringing a fresh new take on things. Yeah, the biz- I'm always intrigued at different industries, how the business-to-business side works, mm-hmm. and the firearms industry is, is different. A lot of two-step distribution. Yeah. Um, it's so very complex. We're we're probably a little more of an old school mm-hmm. industry. Relationships are really mean something. Yeah, which is really yeah. really fun. I love it. It is. It's not just numbers, you know. Yeah, Seth, what did you do before you got to Weatherby? Boy, I don't know a... if we did. We didn't talk about that before. <laughs> yeah, we never really went through my uh, my history on things. So, yeah, uh, post college again. Similar to Raleigh, I'm a, a Wyoming guy, shared and born through and through. So, did you guys know each other at UW? No, no. no. Ironically, fortunately enough, for both of us, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt. I don't know if we would have graduated. So that might, <laughs> that might have been bad. But uh, our wives knew each other really well, though, before we ever knew each other. Yeah, so. our wives were like best friends growing up. Mm-hmm. So you know, later in life, I guess we connected. But uh, no, I I got out of college and I went into the uh, the energy industry as well. But I was in the the coal mining industry. So ran finance at coal mines, some of the large surface mines in Wyoming for. Almost 15 years before I came here. Yeah. And you came on to our finance team. That is correct. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a jack of uh, a jack of many trades, master of none, but yeah, yeah similar to Raleigh. I'd, I'd like to see the stats on how many controllers uh, take off for a couple weeks during uh, elk season to guide. Yeah. There's yeah a, right? That's probably a small list. <laughs> yeah. There's a, yeah. That's a... They're, we're a rare breed, but yeah. we might be out there. They, they made a movie about that, I think. Ben Affleck was in it. He was called, uh, it was called The Accountant. I don't know if you've <laughs> ever seen that, but uh, yes. something similar to that. So, uh, Seth, I, I would, would imagine you'd, you'd choose elk as your favorite uh, thing to hunt. Raleigh, you said you grew up. Was, what's your favorite thing to hunt? Yeah, I grew up waterfowl and upland hunting a lot. Got tired of setting out decoys and moved on to big game and uh, my favorite, which you can't do very often, is bighorn sheep hunt. That, that was awesome. I got mine. I still remember the date. It was October 25th, 2010. What's so, your anniversary? June 4th. Don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> Eight years ago. <laughs> just checking. Now, bighorn just sheep checking. hunting was is by far the best. It's just getting out there into no man's land and seeing all kinds of country and it's just amazing yeah, that's that sheep mounts awesome in your office yeah the deadhead yeah. right by it it's cool yeah it was you got lucky on crazy. the draw too right like you didn't have like yeah points. six points as a resident yep hmm. some of us aren't so lucky that's what i'm gonna do this year <laughs> yeah that's awesome Good. you Perfect. should you should i recommend it <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was thinking about drawing one of those, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's PHA, right? It's, it's weird. There's going to be yes. three of us in this room that are going to draw this year. That's great news, guys. Yeah. yeah we can all hunt together. <laughs> party hunt. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome. Well, uh, thanks for being on here. Yeah. Yeah. It's been fun. You passed. We might have, we might have you back. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. <laughs> uh, if people are interested in the Spike Camp or the new Obsidian, uh, where can they find more information? Uh, you can find that at www.weatherby.com. That's the, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I don't, I'm not ready. Are you still even allowed to say www? www. I thought that would be funny. But, uh, <laughs> no, it's just uh, weatherby.com. You can find out there. Or, again, go into your local dealer. They'll uh, they'll probably know something about it. 